Hello, welcome to evening prayer for Friday, June 2nd. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved, the scriptures teach us to acknowledge our many sins and offenses, not concealing them from our Heavenly Father, but confessing them with humble and obedient hearts, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. We ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before Almighty God, but especially when we come together in his presence to give thanks for the great benefits we have received at his hands, to declare his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things which are necessary for our life and our salvation. Therefore, draw near with me to the throne of heavenly grace. All together, saying, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises. Declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O gladsome light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The first psalm for tonight is Psalm 12. Help me, O Lord, for there is no godly one left, for the faithful have vanished from among the children of men. They speak falsely, every one with his neighbor. They flatter with their lips and deceive with a double heart. The Lord shall root out all deceitful lips and the tongues that speak proud things, which have said, with our tongue will we prevail. Our lips are our own, who is Lord over us. Now because of the trouble of the needy and because of the deep sighing of the poor, I will rise up, says the Lord, and will give help to everyone who longs for it. The words of the Lord are pure words, even as silver that is tried in the furnace, and as gold that is purified seven times in the fire. Preserve us, O Lord, and save us from this perverse and evil generation. The ungodly walk on every side, when wickedness is exalted among the children of men. Psalm 13. How long will you utterly forget me, O Lord? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I seek counsel in my soul and be so vexed in my heart? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, that I sleep not in death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed against him. For if I am cast down, those who trouble me will rejoice. But my trust is in your mercy, and my heart is joyful in your salvation. I will sing of the Lord because he has dealt so lovingly with me. Indeed, I will praise the name of the Lord Most High. <laughs> Psalm 14. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and have become abominable, abominable in their doings. There is none that does good. No, not one. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any who would understand and seek after God. But they all had gone, they all, but they have all gone astray. They have altogether become abominable. There is none that does good, no, not one. 
Have they no knowledge, all these workers of evil, who eat up my people as bread and call not upon the Lord? There were there were they brought into great fear, even where no fear was. For God is in the generation of the righteous. Though you have made a mockery of the counsel of the poor, yet they put their trust in the Lord. Who shall give salvation unto Israel out of Zion? When the Lord restores his captive people, then Jacob, then shall Jacob rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel, beginning with the seventh chapter, the first verse. The word of the Lord came to me. And you, O son of man, thus says the Lord God to the land of Israel, an end, the end has come upon the four corners of the land. Now the end is upon you, and I will send my anger upon you. I will judge you according to your ways, and I will punish you for all your abominations. And my eye will not spare you, nor will I have pity, but I will punish you for your ways, while your abominations are in your midst. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, disaster after disaster, Behold, it comes. An end has come. The end has come. It has awakened against you. Behold, it comes. Your doom has come to you, O inhabitant of the land. The time has come. The day is near, a day of tumult and not of joyful shouting on the mountains. Now I will soon pour out my wrath upon you and spend my anger against you and judge you according to your ways. And I will punish you for all your abominations. And my eyes will not spare, nor will I have pity. I will punish you according to your ways, while your abominations are in your midst. Then you will know that I am the Lord who strikes. Behold the day, behold it comes. Your doom has come, the rod has blossomed, pride has budded. Violence has grown up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor their abundance, nor their wealth. Neither shall there be preeminence among them. The time has come, the day has arrived. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon all their multitude. For the seller shall not return to what he has sold while they live, for the vision concerns all their multitude. It shall not turn back, and because of his iniquity, none can maintain his life. They have blown the trumpet and made everything ready, but none goes to battle, for my wrath is upon all their multitude. The sword is without, pestilence and famine are within. He who is in the field dies by the sword, and him who is in the city famine and pestilence devour. And if any survivors escape, they will be on the mountains, like doves of the valleys, all of them moaning, each one, each one over his iniquity. All hands are feeble and all knees turn to water. They put on sackcloth and horror covers them. Shame is on all the f is on all faces and baldness on all their heads. They cast their silver into the street <coughs> and their gold is like an unclean thing. Their silver and gold are not able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They cannot satisfy their hunger or for fill their stomachs with it. For it was the stumbling block of their iniquity, his beautiful ornament they used for pride, and they made their abominable images and their detestable things of it. Therefore I make it an unclean thing to them, and I will give it into the hands of the foreigners for prey, and to the wicked of the earth for spoil, and they shall profane it. Forge a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. I will bring the worst of the nations to take possession of their houses. I will put an end to the pride of the strong, and their holy places shall be profaned. When anguish comes, they will seek peace, but there shall be none. Disaster comes upon disaster. Rumor follows rumor. They seek a vision from the prophet, while the law perishes from the priests and counsel from their elders. The king mourns, the prince is wrapped in despair, and the hands of the people of the land are paralyzed by terror. According to their way, I will do to them, and according to their judgments, I will judge them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 
sing the Magnificat all together. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he that is mighty has magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on those who fear him. Throughout all generations, he has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones, and has exalted the humble and meek. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, has helped his servant Israel, as he promised to our fathers Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, beginning with the 8th chapter, the 26th verse. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south of the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. There is a desert place. And he rose and went, and there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopian, Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jer- Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go over and join his chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you're reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation, for his life is taken away from the earth? And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with the scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the river, Philip and the eunuch, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azotus, and he and as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Saying the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Sing the Our Father together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace in your church and in the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, 
that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of, Je of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of all the saints, trusting, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. Collect for Ember Day. Almighty God, the giver of all good gifts, in your divine providence, you've appointed various orders in your church. Give your grace, we humbly pray, to all who are now called to any office and ministry for your people. And so fill them with the truth of your doctrine and clothe them with holiness of life, that they may faithfully serve before you to the glory of your great name and for the benefit of the Holy Church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A colic for the Friday after the day of Pentecost. O Lord, we entreat you mercifully to hear us and grant that we, to whom you have given the desire to pray, may by your mighty aid be defended and comforted in all our ad adversities. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A colic for for faith. Lord Jesus Christ, by your death you took away the sting of death. Grant to us your servants so to follow in faith where you have led the way, that we may at length fall asleep peacefully in you and wake up in your likeness for your tender mercy's sake. Amen. A prayer for mission. O God and Father of all, whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you. All nations obey you. All tongues confess and bless you. And men, women, and children everywhere love you and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we'll take 30 seconds for any intercessions and thanksgivings. saying the general thanksgiving together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all, your day, all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make your common our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Have a nice Friday.